Hello friends. This video is a continuation of my previous video in which I had shared my earnings for the month of May 2021. Some of you had asked me to share details of some of my trades and that's exactly what I'm going to do in this particular video. So without any further ado, let me just get started with how I had put on this trade, what was going on in my mind, how I was adjusting these trades and while adjusting what was my viewpoint on the underlying. So the trade that I have put on was a bear call credit spread trade. It was on 27th of March 2021 that I decided to take a very innocent looking bear call credit spread on SPX, which is S&P 500 index. I usually take 50 point wide spreads on SPX and the thought process while taking this trade was very simple. The inflation talks had started gaining traction in the markets and we had already seen a dip in March month from the recent highs in SPX. It was around that time when the inflation talks had really started becoming mainstream. So the index did dip at that stage and while it was going up, somewhere around this candle here, I took on my 50 point wide bear call credit spread. The sold strike was 4080 and the bought strike was 4130. There were two viewpoints I had at that time. The first viewpoint was 4000 would act as a strong psychological barrier for the index. As you can see again from this chart here, the markets had still not touched the 4000 levels and in fact it had reversed from 3980s or something and I thought that 4000 will not be breached in a decent period of time. And what was that decent period of time for me? Two to three months. So in March, I had taken this bear call credit spread that I was going to expire in May 2021. So that was my very first viewpoint. What was my second viewpoint? My second viewpoint was that the growth stocks may underperform or stay sideways for the rest of the year. Of course, in hindsight, both my predictions had gone wrong. But at that time, I was under the impression that if the growth stocks are not going to perform, then considering the higher weightage that these stocks have on S&P 500, then that should limit the upside move of S&P 500. Because yes, I was anticipating some kind of rotation into value, but I was at the same time also thinking that even though there would be some kind of rotation happening, that doesn't mean that S&P 500 would be pushed up. It means that either we would have a sideways movement in the index or it can dip a bit from there. There was also a bit of recency bias while I was taking on this trade. And what was that? I was seeing index moving only upwards for past seven, eight months already. Ever since the pandemic was hit, and the index had breached the 3000 levels and then it shot up and it just kept going up from 3000 all the way up to 4000, right? So at that time I was like, 4000 would be a strong psychological barrier. And so it'll be very safe for me to stick with this particular trade. And on top of it, I had given the index another 80 point worth of moving space. So my sold strike was 80 points above 4000. As we can all see from the chart itself, my view had gone already wrong even before the May month had arrived. So in April month itself, the S&P 500 had decisively breached the 4000 levels. So let me just share some details of this particular trade. It was a bear call credit spread. The premium that I had received was 4140 because there were three lots that I had sold, right? Which means three, sold, three lots sold and three lots bought. So in total, three spreads. And the max loss that I could take on is $15,000. Of course, it's a 50 point wide spread. So 50 into 100, that's 5,000 for one spread because I had three spreads. 50 into 100 into three, 15,000. But that was not my max loss. I had also received the premium. So my max loss was reduced to the same amount. And the total that I could lose due to this trade going wrong was $10,860. Still a massive amount. Now, I was not taking on these trades at once. 
I had originally put on only two credit spreads, but then I tried to average up. Why did I do that? Because I'm not perfect. So I tried to do some kind of dollar cost averaging, even on this spread by selling another spread, because at that time I was very confident of the view. So in total, I had three spreads, but when I entered into this trade, I only had two spreads. I added on another one because I was stupid. Now, if you want more details, really um, day by day account of how I went about putting on this particular original trade and how I did my adjustments, I've also written a blog on this particular trade. So that blog would have a lot more details. So if you're really keen, I would also share the link to that particular blog and you can go ahead and read. And I can assure you one thing, if you would watch this video, as well as go ahead and read that blog, you can consider that blog as your Bible for doing adjustments going forward. You would know what to do and at what point you should be doing that. And some of the decision points that I have mentioned in that blog, that would really help you decide whether you should be doing adjustments or not. All right, so moving on. Let's talk about the adjustments part from here onwards. You see, I never take on trades in a naked manner. I always try to make sure that I have a spread on both sides of the index. Obviously, if there are times when the markets have been trending for a very long period of time, I would avoid taking trade on one of the sides. And in fact, I wasn't selling the bear call credit spreads on index for a very, very long time. But it was the very first instance that I had put on my bear call credit spread after the pandemic had hit. For April, May, June, July period of uh, 2020, when the pandemic had hit, I was not putting on any bear call credit spread because initially I was being challenged. And at that time, I thought this is probably not the right time to put on this particular trade because shorting the index at that time was really close to just doing a suicide. So I put on this bear call credit spread for the first time in the beginning of 2021 and I got challenged already. Now, as I said, I never take any particular spread naked. What does that mean? I try to actually put the trades on both sides. And at that time, I was under the impression that the peak for SPX had already arrived. So I took on the bear call credit spread. And as you can see, at that time, I also had a pre-existing, it was already there, 3,700 sold strike and 3,650 bought strike, a bull put credit spread on the SPX. And of course, it was showing lots of profits. But as you can see, the index was only going up. So at that time, what was my view? My view was to minimize the losses. So this bull put credit spread that I already had was definitely going to help me in minimizing my losses, but I had to do something else as well. And what did I do? And this is probably one of the key adjustments that I always make. I converted my bear call credit spread into an iron fly. And how did I do that? I sold the 4,080 put and I bought the 4,030 put. So it was a 50 point wide iron fly for me. And I'll show you how it ended up minimizing my max losses. But a very important point for you to note over here is that when I sold my bull put spread for 4080, 4030 to convert the credit call spread into Ironfly, I actually sold that bull put spread in the money, which means I was maximizing the premium that I'm going to receive by converting bear call credit spread into an Ironfly. Because at that time, my view had changed. The SPX had surpassed 4,000 levels in such a decisive manner and with huge volumes underneath it that I knew that my position has gone wrong already. At that time, I was in a firefighting mode because I knew that I will have to do a lot of adjustments to come out of this particular trade because my max losses were more than $10,000. So let me share the details of how all these three trades looked like as of 14th of April. The original bear call credit spread, we've already spoken about it. The max loss that I could take on is $10,860. The bull put spread that was already there, right, for $3,700 and $3,650 strike. 
I had received $806 premium in that, and that was only one spread. And when I had converted into Ironfly, that was a conversion done when the spread was in the money and done for three lots. And that was to maximize the premium that I'm going to receive. And how much premium I received? $3,480. So if you can see from here, just by converting my bear call credit spread and my bull put spread of same sold strike, which is 4080, my total losses due to conversion into Ironfly have come down to $7,380. So roughly 30% drop already from the max loss that I could have taken on just by converting into Ironfly. And if I also take into account my pre-existing bull put spread over here, where I had already received a premium of $806, my total reduced max losses would be $6,574. And the beauty of doing these two trades is my max losses are still $15,000. So while my max losses are still sitting at the highest level, I was able to reduce the actual loss that I could take, which is $6,574. And that's the beauty of knowing when to adjust and how to adjust. So at this stage, usually after taking these kind of trades, I do a bit of assessment. I actually take a decision here whether I need to be doing more adjustments or can I just let the underlying go wherever it wants to go and take my max losses. In this particular situation, as you can see, my max losses were $6,500. So the decision was obviously made at that time that I will have to do more adjustments to make sure that my max losses can be further reduced. So that's where we are right now. It's a fight between me and the index. Right now I'm losing because $6,574 are still on stake for me. And I have a iron fly at 4,080 strike. The art of war. You see, the index cannot hit me on both sides. It can either go up, when it does go up, I can sell bull put spreads, or it can go down, in which case I can sell more bear call credit spreads. But it cannot really be attacking me on both sides. So right now it's me against the index. And the idea is very clear. Attack the index where it has the least chances to go. And in this particular instance, it had the least chances to go downwards. The original trade of mine was already being challenged on the upside. Then why not take the positions on the downside, right? So that was the main idea at that time for making further adjustments. So how did I do my further adjustments? Let me show you. That's where the SPX was. I sold bull put spreads again, 50 point wide, but I sold six lots of 4,3950 bull put spreads. And all of those lots were expiring in May, 2021. So they were all monthlies. How much profit I booked eventually? $1,340. The index was just going up. At that time, it had even surpassed the 4,100 levels. So I sold 4,080, 4030 pull put spreads in weeklies. That's what I use weekly options for, for doing my adjustments. And by selling those six lots, that is three lots for 7th May and three for 14th May, I booked a total profit of $3,170 because the index never reversed. It just kept going up or stayed sideways. And somewhere in the middle, I also had three more bull put spreads for the strikes 4,050 and 4,000. So while the index was challenging me on the upside, I was beating the hell out of it on the downside. And that's the art of war learning that I try to implement in my options trading. And at some stage, the index was showing as if it's tired, it does want to reverse, or it just wants to take some rest. And what I did at that time is, I sold a few 
be a call credit spreads as well. So literally fighting it out for every penny that I could. And I booked a total profit of $360, even from the bear call credit spread. So how much did I rake in in total by doing all these adjustments? I don't really have to share all the details over here, but let me just show you the realized profits and losses. If you want more details, I've actually put them out in the blog. You can go ahead and check. So that was my total realized profit and loss. And I'll give you the overall numbers as well really shortly. But what about the realized profit losses from the other trade that I had put on, right? My iron fly plus my iron condor, which I would consider as my original trades. Let's have a look at my original trade. I actually exited from my original trade with a loss of $3502. That was on my bear call credit spread only, right? But my bull put spread that was pre-existing gave me a profit of $528. And the other bull put spread that I had put on for conversion into Ironfly gave me a profit of $3,248. So in total, even from my original trade itself, right after conversion into Ironfly, you can see that I took on a profit of $274. So all the other adjustments that I was sharing just now were merely adding on to my bottom line because the adjustments that I had done initially by conversion into Ironfly and keeping my pre-existing bull put spread was just enough for me to come out of this trade with a slight bit of profits. But let me add a very important point over here. I just got lucky. There may have been situation where my max loss of 10,860 could have materialized. And in that scenario, the situation would have been much different. But if you trade long enough, chances are, Sometimes you do get lucky and sometimes you do get unlucky. So eventually you end up seeing all kinds of scenarios that can happen in future. And that's the benefit or drawback of trading for a very long time. But let me just show you how I got lucky. You see, when index had already run up so much, at some stage, it was showing some kind of a fatigue, right? And it dropped down from the levels of 4,200 or so. It kept falling and I still had my positions on. In fact, at that time, I was selling more bull put spreads for June month, for July month, for August month, and even for December month. Not to mention, I was also selling more bull put spreads for the May month as well. If you see this candle over here, it was a hammer that was formed and I knew that this is probably the base and the index would not come back to test these levels again. So this candle over here, the very next day's candle that I have also shown with the help of this arrow is when I exited my original beer call credit spread. And as you would see at that time, it was very close to my bot call. And because it was so close to my bot call, my bot call had so much premium that was able to offset my sold call premium and my overall losses were much lesser comparatively. And that was probably one or two days before the actual expiration date of 21st of May. And that was also the time when I actually exited my other bull put spreads. And that's why I was able to come out of this particular trade with much less loss and eventually took on a profit of $274. And in total, if I add up the total profit that I made from this loss making trade is $6,634. Sometimes I realize that I make most of the profits when I'm being challenged. And this is one of those cases. I was being challenged and I made most of my profits out of it. However, one thing that should come to your mind if it hasn't already, what about my max losses? As you can see, I was taking six slots three lots, three lots, two lots. So my max losses should be huge, right? And if it did come to your mind, at least it'll tell me that you understood all the adjustments that I've done so far. And yes, it's a very valid question to ask. What about all these losses that I could have taken if the index would have reversed and maybe dropped sharply by 10, 20%, right? So that kind of a sharp down move would have wiped out my account. 
So what should you do if you're being challenged? Should you be doing these kind of idiotic adjustments that I made? No, don't be an idiot like me, all right? Just do enough adjustments so that you come out of that trade without any losses. So I've got three lessons for you to learn out of this kind of a scenario. Use your adjustments sparingly, right? You don't have to adjust every loss making trade. Sometimes just stay humble, acknowledge that your view has gone wrong. And if the losses are manageable for you, and if they're not going to put on a big dent on your account, then go ahead, book the loss and move on, right? The adjustments are meant to indemnify you, right? To only help you recoup your losses. Because I have made some profits out of the loss making trade, that doesn't mean that you should always aim for loss making trade. Even for me as well, the ultimate goal is to not take losses. If I'm not taking losses on a longer period of time, of course I'll be a profitable trader. And that's how I like to go about my trading. Keep your powder dry. While taking a lot of these adjustment trades, I had to put on a lot of capital on the table, right? Because you need buying power. So keep your powder dry. And that's why I say you should never exceed more than 50% of your available buying power on trades unless you're being challenged or you're about to take on losses. So that's exactly what I do. My 50% buying power always remains spare. So all my returns that you would have seen, they all come from not utilizing maximum of my buying power. So keep your powder dry whenever any underlying or whenever the opportunity arises, you would be able to take on a lot more trades if you have the buying power available. If your trades are going in losses, if you have enough buying power, your broker would feel comfortable about your trades and they would not square them off. And lastly, if you have to do adjustments, you would need buying power because all my adjustments are buying power intensive. If you don't have buying power, you won't be able to do those adjustments. So keep your powder dry all the time. And that's also the art of war, right? Lastly, and the most important point in this entire video, every time your credit spread is challenged, for you, conversion into Ironfly and just selling two credit spreads on the side where you're not challenged should suffice. This should suffice 80 to 90% of the times. So if you're challenged, you sold two spreads on the other side and also converted the original trade into iron fly should be enough. If the underlying still goes against you, there are chances that if it moved one or 2% against you again, after taking on these two trades, you would see that you're actually at a break even point. And at that time, just exit. I do it all the time. Only recently I had a trade on Apple where I had sold a call, which was a naked call at 135 strike and the Apple was trading at 132. So I sold out of the money put to convert that into a straddle. And I also sold two bull put credit spreads of 125, 115 strike on Apple for the same expiry. And the very next day, Apple was up 1% and I saw that my trades are already in profits. So I exited my original trade, which obviously had a lot of losses, and the other two trades, that is the put that I had sold out of the money, and the two bull put credit spreads. And I took on a total profit of roughly $50, right? For me, that's still an exit at break even. So not taking losses should be your ultimate goal. So that's all I wanted to share in this particular video. If you're still here watching the video, I really thank you a lot. And I do sincerely hope that whatever that I've covered in this video will help you improve your trading, your options trading strategies in the long run. Thank you and I'll see you soon.